Uh, I'm, so I'm Jean Parpaillon. Um, I'm software, uh, Elixir software developer and architect. And uh, I'm working actually on a, um, uh, a project using nerves for the energy industry. And uh, I want to ask, uh, to, to start with a question. Uh, who of you have already used nerves in a project? Okay, good. And who ever, ever uh, ask if nerves is mature enough for the industry? Okay, this is not a concern, I know. Because in the IT industry, uh, the maturity of a project is not a big concern. I, ah, yeah. And um, I've seen that recently, it makes me laugh. Uh, but I don't know if it's really uh, funny, because uh, some people consider that uh, most of IT industry is relying on, on a weak basis, uh, because uh, we are using some tools that we have not audited. Uh, it may be uh, some, some pieces of uh, modern uh, uh, IT industry rely on uh, a code that is uh, developed by a single guy in his garage, a really brave guy, but uh, he's alone. So um, I want to compare with another industry which is uh, more critical and which uh, uh, for decades has developed a, a, a methodology to better define what is the technology uh, that you can use in a, a, in a project, uh, uh, in a critical project or not, which is the rocket industry. And uh, the, the rocket industry made the difference between science fiction, uh, what is a tool, a, a toy, I mean, uh, what is an experiment, uh, a model and an experiment. And in this industry, when something goes wrong, it goes really wrong. When something goes right, it means that people uh, went to space and land up safely on the Earth. And um, so I want to compare uh, the, the uh, I, I want to use this uh, methodology uh, that has been developed by the NASA to identify what technology uh, is ready to be included in a, in a project. Uh, they have developed so they, what is called the technology readiness level. They developed nine, nine levels, and depending on the level, uh, they consider that the technology can be used for an experiment. Uh, it's okay to, uh, uh, for a rocket that brings material, materials, or uh, it's okay for a rocket that will bring uh, people in space. And this is not the same requirement. And um, AW2 is an open source uh, organization that hosts open source projects and that wanted also not only help the project to grow, but also uh, uh, help decision makers, means architects or, or CIOs, uh, to identify if a project fits requirements in an IT, uh, in an IT project. We, uh, at AW2, we have tried to use uh, a, a dual approach. Um, means one side of, uh, of this methodology is based on the knowledge of the market, and uh, we have defined these nine levels of maturity for that. And another approach, another side of the, the, the methodology, is a more uh, scientific and objective one, which use uh, a set of good practices and tools to analyze uh, a project. Uh, and these good practices and tools uh, have been uh, uh, defined through a collaboration with a lot of uh, scientific uh, uh, project, research projects. Uh, if you go on the AW2 website, you can find a lot of reference and links to these outcomes and, and papers. So I won't enter into all these details. Um, because the, the objective was to uh, um, um, uh, analyze uh, a requirement in, in, in my project and identify if NERS was a good fit for that and what can be improved uh, in NERS for that. So my use case is that one. Uh, the Zola company I'm working for is developing uh, uh, solar panel systems to bring clean, affordable and, and reliable power 
where it is not. And this, is this picture has been taken in Tanzania, in a village in Tanzania, so you can see solar panels. But in this, behind this system, you have a lot of other components. There are batteries, there are inverters, there are switches, there are uh, uh, IT devices to communicate, to control, to monitor. We have a cloud infrastructure to collect the data, uh, to uh, collect the alarms, and to uh, um, uh, ease the maintenance of the systems. So one part of the system is that piece of hardware, and it contains also a lot itself a lot of, of systems. Uh, and I was working on, I am working on these specific parts. So this specific part we call the communication gateway, and uh, the feature we need to implement are the following ones. So we need to collect data through different uh, um, local networks, uh, CAN bus, radio networks, uh, air, uh, uh, serial networks. We need to uh, monitor uh, the, the, the batteries, the solar panels. We need to control them with some uh, in, uh, uh, algorithm included in the communication gateway. We need to trigger alarms when, uh, when needed. And we need to control switches of the electrical uh, installation. We need to control inverters also. And then we also need to uh, upload, to, to, uh, to connect to our cloud infrastructure uh, in a secured way uh, through different means, some reliable networks, some non-reliable. When Wi-Fi is accessible, we use Wi-Fi, but we may also use uh, 3G networks, 4G networks. Uh, and then we uh, connecting to our cloud infrastructure, <coughs> we upload measurements and uh, alarms. So uh, one year ago, we thought that that was a good fit for NERS. And after, uh, uh, after one year of development, uh, I wanted to present this, uh, uh, my feedback on that. First, as an architect, uh, using the methodology I, I took before, and as a developer from my day-to-day -day work as a developer. So, first as an architect, uh, I'll, uh, so I, I'm, as I said, I will, I have tried to use the methodology described before. Even if Nerves is not a project hosted by AW2, there are some some metrics that are specific to uh, the AW2 organization, but most of them are real or um, can be applied to any kind of uh, open source project. And uh, so the the first pillar is the implementation of good practices of open source good practices. The first one. Uh, is the, about the project communication. Of course, this is, the, this is a domain where usually we are uh, pretty good at it. Uh, do we have a, a website? Is there a non-technical introduction to the, um, to the project? Um, uh, NERVS, uh, uh, NERVS website has links to the source code, to the, to the latest release. Uh, of course, because it uses GitHub. So this is common these are common practices, but it's interesting to check that. We have implemented, uh, NERVs have implemented that. On the next item, there are some um, uh, project community. Um, so when there is a green mark, uh, it means that it is implemented by the project. When there is a question mark, I've not been able to identify if it was uh, fully implemented. And there's also an uh, orange mark where uh, it means that it's partially implemented. Regarding the project community, uh, uh, mainly it's about if the project is maintained by a single person, uh, or, do, or is there a full community around that? Uh, is there communication? Um, um, is the community, uh, the community open to other contribution, etc.? And in that case, the nurse project appears to implement most of uh, uh, good practices. Uh, Something that I could not identify and that may help in gaining contributors for the project is the um, easy to find list of, of uh, uh, e contribution for new contributors. Uh, some projects present on their website the, uh, a, a way to, uh, to uh, easily contribute that can be through documentation, through, through uh, only bug reports but uh, also some technical contribution that uh, could be done by new contributors. Uh, I was not able to identify that. Maybe it exists, but it is not easily visible on the website. Uh, yeah. 
next point is about the project documentation because uh, uh, as a developer, I suppose that most of uh, us are developers here, but, and, and we used to document our, our code, but uh, documentation is not only the inline documentation in the code. Uh, if the, uh, the, the uh, good practices is to have the documentation dedicated to different uh, uh, class of, of people for the users, for the developers, uh, but also for uh, um, high-level decision makers, um, and on, the, on that uh, for, for the NERF, uh, the NERF project, uh, the documentation is quite comprehensive, and that that's a really good point. Uh, the only thing I could not see is uh, uh, an explicit uh, developer documentation on how the, the coding guidelines, for instance, but the fact that in Elixir domain we use. Uh, uh, we already use Credo or mix format to uh, to um, to select the, the I mean to um, to define the coding guidelines uh, is already a, go a good point. Um, and so also something that was not easy to find is the contribution workflow, which means uh, if I want to contribute the project, who will review my pull request? Uh, is there an identify workflow or if it's just uh, on a best effort basis? And so that may help uh, improving the, 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 the contribution workflow may help uh, new contributors to enter the project. The next part is about the development infrastructure. Uh, the development infrastructure. Uh, so uh, Nerves uh, using GitHub. Uh, it provides uh, uh, GitHub provides a lot of, of uh, uh, the, the, the implements a lot of good practices for the, the, the development infrastructure. Um, so the issue tracker is, is is there. The source repository, of course, is there. Uh, the, um, the collaborative development environment uh, is state of the art. Uh, the the thing that I could not really uh, find an evidence was uh, the um, uh, communication mechanism for interacting with the community, and so uh, for, for on that point, uh, I mean, I, I, I probably I, I don't know if my opinion is shared by everyone here, but s the problem uh, the using Slack can. Uh, um, we can lose the, the history of discussion and it can be dis difficult for some people to find the history of a discussion. Uh, so probably uh, uh, a, f a forum or a mail list um, can provide more searchable or, or linkable um, um, mechanism for communicating. Uh, Slack has other advantage that uh, I will see later. Uh, about the project management, the project management good practices are about w uh, identifying who is doing what in the project, who is responsible for what, who is defining the, the release process, uh, when, uh, uh, who is defining the roadmap. And on that point, uh, I have to say that uh, it, it, it is still difficult to, to know exactly uh, who is responsible for uh, what part in NERVS, uh, given that NERVS is made of, uh, is, is a framework and is made of a lot of different components. Uh, the only point that is obviously uh, uh, checked is the, that the project facilitates community support through the use of Slack. It's really easy to communicate with the developers of, of NERVS uh, through Slack, even if it's difficult uh, uh, time after that to, to retrieve the discussions. Um, project licenses. Uh, it can be it can be quite obvious for you that uh, NERVS is an open source project, but the problem is that when you develop uh, for embedded software, we sometimes have to deal with proprietary uh, uh, proprietary drivers or even uh, open source drivers, but with some incompatibilities incompatibilities between the licenses. Um, hopefully, NERVS relies on on a, a build root for the low level uh, base system, and build root itself deals with that in a really smart way. So they are tools to identify if there are incompatibilities between licenses. Uh, as a developer, it may not be a big concern, but when, developing, uh, when deploying the product uh, uh, on the field, uh, that can be important to be able to check if there is no uh, incompatibilities uh, between the different licenses in the code. 
Uh, about the development process also, we have, there, there are five uh, uh, items considered as good practices, and most of them are, are uh, implemented by NERVs because the, the NERVs use an uh, issue tracker, uh, source repository with uh, different, uh, uh, with well identified, with semantic versioning that identify. Uh, uh, identify the, 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 the versions. Uh, the, something that could help uh, in uh, really uh, uh, pushing in production a product with nerves is to identify stable and development version because uh, uh, Sometimes you prefer to have less feature and a stable and use a stable version, and sometimes you prefer to have uh, the, 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 the the latest version, even if you uh, can deal with some um, um, uh, instability. The testing process. Uh, so uh, again, five five items to check. Um, of course, thanks to the, the, the tooling of the Elixir ecosystem, we have good static code analysis. We have, it's a compiled language, so uh, we already we, we have first the, the compiler, then we, the, there is dialyzer, uh, there is good automatic test, uh, automated test framework that are implemented in NERVs, of course. Um, actually, uh, the core components of NERVs do not expose the test coverage. Uh, I mean, individually, we can run the test, run the coverage, and, and uh, run the test and identify the coverage of the, of the test. But it is not exposed on the uh, on the repository on GitHub or on the website. Uh, and that can exposing the the, the, the test coverage can help uh, uh, gaining confidence uh, when choosing a nerve or project. Um, Okay, and uh, another the another topic is the release management. So the release management items are: uh, uh, Do we use semantic versioning, which is considered like a standard uh, in in, uh, in uh, versioning, uh, to identify what what is a, a small change or a bigger change in the API, or, or so on. Uh, of course, all uh, nerves release include change log, uh, uh, source code, and so on. Uh, a point that can uh, that uh, I had to face uh, I had to face when uh, developing with nerve is that sometimes uh, there, there are some breaking change that are not well identified when upgrading a version of, of nerve so this is a point that may be improved I think uh, and the last point is about security and vulnerability management. Uh, it can be uh, uh, frightening, but don't <laughs> a lot of projects are on, on, on the, the same the same level. Uh, so there are some standards in the, the, the software industry to identify uh, how to report confidentially uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, how many times, if I report a security uh, a security issue, how many times? Uh, do I have to fix this before the, the vulnerability is made public? Uh, can I uh, do I identify uh, how, how do I uh, identify a, uh, a bug and, and differentiate from a security issue? And uh, using those good practices uh, are important for the security, and because uh, also because we deploy with nerves, we deploy uh, uh, devices on the uh, on the field. And they uh, they can uh, they can bring security issue in a, in a whole infrastructure if there are some uh, vulnerabilities. So this is um, a, a trial of uh, identifying what good practices uh, are implemented in NERVs, uh, and that was the first pillar of the uh, market readiness level methodology. So now. Uh, let's go to the second, uh, the second pillar of this uh, methodology. I have not run the tools on the NERVs project, again, because there's a lot of subcomponents, so it's difficult to identify the boundaries between what is really the core of NERVs or the, the external components. But I have tried to identify what tools could be used uh, to, to, uh, um, to measure uh, this, uh, the, the, the quality. Uh, regarding the activity of the, the project, so the, 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 the activity of the community around NERVs, uh, GitHub provides some tools around that. So you can have statistics about the contributions, how many times uh, the bugs are open, for instance. 
Uh, the Holo platform provides also some tools for analyzing this, but uh, I could see only one component of nerves um, analyzed by Holo. Uh, so uh, that could be interesting to, to, uh, to uh, uh, add other components of um, of nerves on the platform. Uh, for the compliance, I, I already said that uh, BuildRoot provides the, the right tool for that. On the quality of the code itself, I have mentioned uh, Credo, Mix Format, you know all these tools from the Elixir community that are really uh, um, important tools and uh, really useful. Uh, test coverage is not used, but is available. And for, the, for having a, a synthetic dashboard of the, 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 the project quality, uh, so GitHub can be a, a good tool, but there is a specialized tool which is called SonarCube, which is used for a lot by a lot of open source projects. Unfortunately, they do not support actually the Elixir language. Um, so that may be interesting to, um, uh, to add uh, Elixir or, or Erlang support to SonarCube because it, it is considered uh, it is considered as a, 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 I mean, as a standard matrix. So the, the, the score you have on SonarCube can be compared with other um, uh, projects. Okay, and now uh, my developer point of view. Uh, so I have used uh, NERVs for, for, for one year and um, I have identified, uh, so my developer point of view is uh, for building a world system with nerves, could I find easily the base tools uh, for dealing with networking, for dealing with the firmware upgrades, all the things that are not my core features. My core features are monitoring, controlling uh, uh, an energy system. It's not about dealing with the network configuration, building the, the, the firmware and that kind of thing. And so the outcome of my uh, one-year experience with that is that uh, uh, NERVS provides a, uh, pretty all the, 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 the uh, interesting, uh, I mean, all the, the, the base bricks for building a, a complete system. Uh, relying on build root uh, proved to be really efficient when, communica when uh, communicating with the hardware manufacturer because uh, if we ask a hardware manufacturer, for instance, to provide a, a base system and you use a non-standard, uh, some really exotic system, many uh, hardware manufacturers are not familiar with Elixir or Erlang, or they and they were afraid of providing us with the base platform. But we say, no, no, it's just build with the base is build with, so okay, it's a standard, so they could provide us with the base system. Uh, the network configuration uh, is, is handled uh, in a comprehensive way by the vintage net libraries, so that's good. Uh, NERVS comes with a lot of uh, uh, drivers or libraries for, for low-level communication, CAN networks, RS-232 networks, and so on. Uh, and one really good point, because uh, on the previous experience I, I had to deal with that manually, is that NERVs come with firmware upgrades facilities uh, for flashing to SD card, uh, upgrading through SSH, through HTTP. There's a lot of different uh, uh, backends for upgrading the firmware. And recently, the NERVs Hub project uh, uh, has been started to deal with the whole firmware lifecycle, and which was really uh, interesting because uh, we can, uh, it, it can handle the initial provisioning of the, the firmware, the security of the firmware, uh, if you want to protect your device from being flashed by a wrong, uh, a wrong fr firmware. Uh, so th these are the good points. Um, and then uh, just to finish, I want to speak about two uh, technologies that, uh, in my opinion, could be improved. They, they are really useful in the industry and the, the integration with NERVS can be improved. The first one is, the, is SNMP. I don't know if any one of you has already had to deal with SNMP. This is an old protocol, and so we are not really... Uh, uh, it's, it's rarely that, that we have to... Uh, we think about SNMP for, for an API, but when integrating a device in an existing uh, IT infrastructure, uh, it appears that SNMP is, is already present in a lot of network appliances and uh, or, or, or network dashboarding or, or alarm system, and so it can be interesting to implement this. And the the, the actual implementation of uh, SNMP 
uh, if you want to use NERVs, uh, comes from OTP, from the Erlang uh, based libraries. And so there's, uh, there's the tools to build an SNMP agent, like a server. Uh, there's tools to compile a data model uh, into some Erlang code. And uh, it's pretty well integrated with Mnesia. The problem is that the agent configuration, if you had already had a look at the, the documentation in OTP, uh, is done through a, a non-standard way, but not even standard in OTP. It's made of nine different uh, Erlang style configuration files that you need to fill before compilation. Uh, it's absolutely not di dynamic. The MIP compiler do not generate data structure, so it's, uh, uh, um, it's hard to integrate the, the, the SNMP data model uh, into your, um, your existing application. And if you use Mnesia for storing the, 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 the MIP data, it's difficult also to reuse in your application because it's used specific tables. So I have, I have developed some, uh, some code. I just invite you to, uh, uh, if you're interested, to have a look. It's not finished. It's not, uh, it's not mature, uh, but uh, the, the idea was to provide a more elixir way to uh, implement SNMP. Uh, through a, a specific DSL to define the agent, uh, macros for uh, um, using the, the, the MIB data in your Elixir application, and also provide some callbacks to store or get the data from any storage. So actually, there is, uh, uh, I'm using the Mnesia adapter uh, under the hood, the OTP Mnesia adapter under the hood. But uh, if someone is interested in, in contributing, uh, I think that it would be really useful to have a Necto uh, adapter, which means that any database could be used. And concretely, that looks like this. So uh, the, the, um, this is the MIP definition. It comes from the SNMP world. Uh, an, uh, an Elixir module using the MIB just declare the name of the file you want to, to, to compile. And then you have some callbacks. You can implement some callbacks to access the data or use an instrumentation, uh, um, a generic uh, backend, like it's called instrumentation, uh, which can use Mnesia or uh, let's hope uh, Ecto. And this is the definition of, the, of an agent. If you already have to uh, develop an agent in Erlang, you, you may appreciate the difference between the nine configuration files and this, this DSL. So this is for SNMP, and uh, uh, the last, uh, the other uh, technology I wanted to use on my device because I think it, it's really, uh, um, I mean, it's natural in, in Elixir to use this, but unfortunately it was not really integrated. It's Amnesia, uh, so. Um, because, I mean, I, I, I think I don't have to, to uh, speak about the advantage of using Mnesia, uh, but the fact that it's already included in OTP, it's, it's, uh, it makes it easy to integrate. Uh, the fact that we can, you can choose per table uh, the disk storage or, or, or memory storage is really nice because we are dealing with time series, for instance, and we don't want to store everything on disk, but we, but, uh, but some, uh, we want to use a single, a single database to handle volatile data or persistent data. The drawbacks of using Mnesia are that uh, it's not, a, it's not a, a relational database like, uh, like uh, MySQL or PostgreSQL, for instance. Uh, Mnesia hardly deals with composite key. You can tweak Mnesia to use composite key, but it's not naturally handled. Uh, there's no support for foreign key constraints, unicity constraints. It's based on records, so, which is fine for Erlang, but when you use Elixir, you may prefer to use uh, uh, maps, for instance. And there's no support for jointers, um, natural uh, um, uh, jointer support. So um, I had a look at the existing uh, Ectomnesia uh, support. So there was a, uh, there was a driver, a backend for, for um, there was a Necto backend for Mnesia that was developed times ago, but it was not updated. It was uh, compatible with Ecto 2 only. And uh, some people have has started to um, upgrade it for Ecto 3. But it was, not, it, was not, uh, uh, it was not supporting all the features of Ecto. So um, 
I just wanted to give an, uh, uh, to highlight this project because I think it, it will deserve a it will deserve to be uh, um, more developed. Uh, and now, uh, after contributing the. So the Ecto3 Nesia uh, project uh, can handle composite keys, so you can have uh, uh, um, records with different primary keys. You, it it supports unique constraints, it supports foreign constraints, it supports quite all the queries, the Ecto queries. Uh, we have a good test coverage, so we are confident that it supports all the queries, but of course, uh, we may find some bugs uh, when using it. Um, uh, and the, the, the two remaining features that are really missing are the support for migrations. So actually, we have, some, we have an API to, uh, to build tables from, from a schema, but it's not, really, uh, it's not exactly like the, the, uh, the Ecto migrations. And the, compilation, the query compiler has some performance issues uh, because uh, the, the, so the Ecto query, I know that there were some talks about the Ecto query, so uh, this is a full topic, but uh, we, need to, we, we had to build a compiler to compile Ecto queries into the QLC, QLC which is the query language for, from Nesia, and this compiler has some uh, performance issues. So uh, we have ideas on how to fix that, but it still needs to be done. And uh, so that's all for my uh, journey with nerves. <laughs>